Hey, if you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place, buddy. Oh, wait a second. Hey, you got three seconds before I break your face in. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie franchises with only one good movie. You guys might not know this, but I consider myself a bit of a loner. I tend to think of myself as a one-man wolf pack. For this list, we'll be looking at great live-action films that stand out against their bad, cheap, and or unfortunate sequels, reboots, installments, or follow-ups. What's the most disappointing sequel you've ever seen? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. The Rambo Franchise – First Blood Rambo First Blood offers the bleakest story in the Rambo franchise, which is why this film stands so far above the rest. They drew First Blood, not me. Look, Johnny. Let me come in and get you the hell out of there. They drew First Blood. First Blood is a character study of one of Sylvester Stallone's most iconic roles. But with each sequel, the deep, troubled Rambo of the first installment fades slowly away. He becomes a mindless killing machine, a shift which basically reduces the films to over-the-top action flicks with no real substance. Murdoch. I'm coming to get you. The writing gets progressively sloppier with each sequel, but even so, there was a TV show spin-off in the works as recently as 2021 and Stallone has even discussed ideas for a Rambo 6. This franchise would probably be better off stopping while it's behind. Don't push it, I'll give you a war you won't believe. <laughs> Let it go. Number 9. The Hangover Franchise The Hangover The Hangover was a great standalone film, but let's be honest. How many movies can you make about a group of adult men piecing together a single drunken night out? Why don't you just stop worrying for one minute? Be proud of yourself. I don't know, Phil. Maybe it's because I'm missing a tooth. Or maybe it's because there's a tiger in our hotel room. The first flick was just realistic enough to be funny, but the second and third are too ridiculous to believe. While even the first movie relies on offensive slapstick at times, it's still a great movie to watch on a lazy Saturday morning. The sequels, on the other hand, squash the energy and hilarity of its actors with unoriginal writing and cheap, absurd plots. What the hell? I'm not cool with this at all. You can't have these. While the whole franchise offers the same great cast with surprising and hilarious chemistry, only the first deserves the label of a truly good comedy. But no matter what happens, remember, this is all about Alan getting better. Mother, Oreo smoothie now! Number 8. The Taken Franchise Taken Even Liam Neeson didn't believe in the first Taken film, which he believed would be sent straight to home video. L let me tell you something, Mr. Whoever you are. This is a business. This is a very unique business with a very unique clientele. I'll pay! Flash forward to its release, the film grossed $145 million at the box office and skyrocketed Neeson to the Action Hero Hall of Fame. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Taken might not win any prizes for being the most original film out there, but it finds a way to refresh the tired cliches of its genre. When it comes to the sequels, though, it's hard to figure out where to start. The flicks can be so hard to believe at times that they're almost better watched as parodies than actual action films. Despite all three installments being rated PG-13, Taken 3 seems to have taken it the most to heart, with very little bite to any of its action sequences. Please, don't hate me. I'm not responsible for what happened. Number 7. The Scary Movie Franchise Scary Movie Scary Movie doesn't try to be anything other than what it is, a crude, carefree parody that revels in getting as lowbrow as possible while still offering some insightful mockery of the horror genre. Where am I? Um, you're, you're behind the couch. <laughs> what? How do you know that? 
It will live on forever in the comedy genre as one of the most famous parody films ever made. The four sequels range from just okay to totally unwatchable, with the second film offering at least a few good laughs, and the last one being nothing short of annoying. Help! Help! Here. Oh. Take my hand. Ah! Come on! <laughs> You're gonna fall unless you take my hand. Though their star-studded casts and inclusion of the self-proclaimed shun from Hollywood Charlie Sheen make these films feel like a nostalgic time capsule of the early 21st century, none of the latter scary movie films are really worth watching as anything other than guilty pleasures. Dr. Phil? What the hell's going on? I don't know. I was doing a show on teens with abandonment issues and suddenly I woke up here. Man, those kids are gonna be pissed. Number 6. The Meet the Parents Franchise Meet the Parents Meet the Parents is a hilarious film that thrives on the unexpected chemistry between Robert De Niro and Ben Stiller. He told me he grew up on a farm. Hmm. Do they have many farms in Detroit? No, Dina. No, not a lot. While the comedy occasionally leans into bad slapstick humor, it is at times a truly funny film. In fact, it was so good that it was done all over again in Meet the Falkers and then all over again in Little Falkers, the two unfortunate sequels. Hello, Greg. Hey. Hey, Jack. Do you mind explaining this? Both movies boast essentially the same plot, the same jokes, and the same relationships as the first film, with almost no growth or forward movement. By the third movie, it's just not funny anymore. You'd be better off rewatching Meet the Parents three times in a row than sitting through its pair of sequels. Number 5. The Jaws Franchise Jaws Jaws is one of the most classic films of all time. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Almost everyone can recall the iconic music and the famous line from the original film, but not many people even know about Jaws' shameful sequels. Jaws 2 isn't very good, and the title of Jaws 3D alone shows the filmmaker's preference for spectacle over substance. The fourth film utterly ignores the third installment and acts as a sequel to the second movie. Huggy? Yeah? Jake tells me you're gonna have to fly the rest of your life to pay off what you lost at the crap table. But also flops terribly with critics and audiences alike. Though no amount of bad installments can ever ruin the perfection that is the original Jaws, these sequels are not particularly worth remembering, let alone watching. What are you serious? Yeah, I think this one's on me. Number four, the Robocop franchise. Robocop. Few movies pack a punch like the original Robocop. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night. This sci-fi action flick, much like the body of the titular character, is a merging of extremes. Hilarious dark humor, deep vulnerability, and enough gory violence to satisfy any action fan. But while Robocop 2 is hardly a memorable addition to the franchise, it's the following two sequels that truly obliterate the promise of the first film. I think we should talk. After all, what's the point of a PG-13 RoboCop sequel when half of the fun is the mindless, almost satirical gore? And RoboCop 3 doesn't even star Peter Weller, whose performance contributes quite a bit to the quality of the first film. It makes you wonder, are the writers of the sequels even fans of the first RoboCop? Or have they seen the movie at all? I can feel them. But I can't remember them. Number 3. The Paranormal Activity Franchise Paranormal Activity Paranormal Activity is a great example of how horror franchises with a unique original movie are almost always destined to be followed by pale, lifeless remakes. Kid, what are you doing out here? Kid. Hey. What? Freezing out here. What are you doing? No close up. At this point, this entire film series is known as a bad set of horror movies, but the first one shouldn't be lumped in with the rest. While it's by no means the world's best film, the first paranormal activity captured audiences with its interesting concept and original twist on the found footage subgenre. With a whopping six installments and counting, you'd think at least one of them could be as good as the first. Instead, they seemingly just keep getting worse, with Paranormal Activity 4 to Paranormal Activity Next of Kin 
mostly being bashed by critics and audiences alike as being silly and full of cheap jump scares. Yeah, we're typically not supposed to be um, photographed because, you know, uh, vanity is a sin. Despite relatively decent box office numbers, yet another installment is set to be released on Paramount Plus in 2023. Number 2. The Jurassic Park Franchise Jurassic Park The dinosaurs of Jurassic Park are a revelation in monster horror, but even putting our toothy friends aside, this film's nuanced characters and strong dose of Steven Spielberg's suspense make it an undeniable classic. We're gonna make a fortune with this place. Unfortunately, the second film actually ruins aspects of the first, like making the Velociraptor seem so easily defeated that a girl can fight one using gymnastics? Once the first Jurassic World installment emerged in 2015, it was game over for this franchise. The only thing linking these films to the first three are the dinosaurs, which may actually look worse than they did compared to the dinosaurs in the original Jurassic Park trilogy. Lazy writing, a lack of chemistry, and poor scares make these latter sequels a painful disappointment for all the fans of the OG Jurassic Park. And remember, if something chases you. Come on. Yeah, all right. Funny. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Ghostbusters Franchise Ghostbusters We came, we saw, we kicked its ass! Did you see it? What is it? We got it! The original Ghostbusters is one of the most iconic and quotable films ever made. It's a movie that offers everything. Rather than just being carried by talented actors, a clever plot, or genius writing, the supernatural flick combines all three into a captivating mix of comedy and horror. But the rest of the installments in the franchise don't seem to understand just what was so magical about the original. Yeah, you did it. Yeah. We all did it. We, we all did it. We all did it. We all did it. <laughs> While each subsequent film offers its best attempt, they're either too concerned with being funny, nostalgic, or different to actually deliver anything as special as the first movie. At this point, diehard fans of Ghostbusters would probably rather see the franchise die altogether than to continue spawning sequels or half-hearted reboots. But even so, there's a Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel set to premiere in 2023. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.